Hello everyone, it is 11.13 p.m. on Tuesday, I guess it's the 28th of March. I am going to do two Love is Blind episodes back to back, and I am working on a um, Queen's Court episode about the entire series. I'm currently on episode seven. I'm deeply obsessed with the show and I will be putting an abrupt end to my swarm recaps because I'm acting way too out of character to pretend that I can watch a bloody, gory, scary show. I've heard two podcast hosts say that the show was just too disturbing Another podcast host who I subscribed to his newsletter said it wasn't about stan culture and pop culture, but that's kind of what they were peddling it, it as and promoting it as. And so it's not for me. Um, but thank you to those who have listened to my Swarm episode. I just, I'm not going to do that to myself. I'm not, I can't sit through anything that feels like torture. Kind of like that's why I haven't watched The Bachelor or The Bachelorette in forever unless there's like a black bachelor at which you know i watched rachel and then they just cast another black bachelorette and i'll watch her um but now she's now the third black one but i'm not i'm not sitting through something that i don't want to sit through so um as far as love is blind i spent a significant amount of time let me not be so vague i spent probably two and a half hours total um, on Twitter, reading tweets and tweeting people and liking their tweets or whatever um, since Love is Blind dropped. Um, and I'm a little obsessed this year, to be honest. I'm a little obsessed, if you can't tell, by how much time I've spent, um, you know, reading tweets. But it's like, I thought I was only going to watch the first two episodes of Love is Blind and the last two episodes because that's the only way I could stomach the series because the couples have been so, so tragic. But, you know, how the hell could I watch Tiffany and Brett and not feel compelled to watch the whole effing season? <laughs> like, how? How? So, um... I'm going to give my thoughts on the show, and this is going to contain spoilers, just like the other episode I will be recording after this. If you haven't seen it, and you don't want any spoilers, you need to watch the, watch the show, watch the series, season four, and then get back um, and listen to what I have to say, please, and thank you. Also, thank you again to all of my listeners. You guys warm my heart. You really, really do. I love you guys from the bottom of my heart. I am starting to just get such a healthy perspective on the podcast, and you guys are all a part of it. Every single one of you who've been subscribed, every single one of you who subscribes uh, with each episode, thank you. Shout out to y'all. I also put out an update on Instagram and Twitter saying that I got approved to monetize. Guess what? A bitch is not going to monetize. So when I started the podcast, I always knew I had to have a certain amount of traffic or sorry, traffic, certain amount of listenership um, for ads to make sense. And then I got approved and then it occurred to me like, nah, I'm not it. it I I can't put ads on at this current moment. <laughs> so I guess I was congratulating myself for no damn reason. All right. Let's discuss the show Love is Blind. And I want to talk about the, the premise of the series. I watched season one. Um, I was very obsessed and I got two other people to watch it with me, okay? So I watched it solo, then watched it right like right alongside two other people individually, like a crazy, um, you know, psycho fan or like a stan. I just, it, you know, we all thought it was dope dating behind a wall and we were all behind walls because it was like peak pandemic. But, you know... 
at, now that the show is in its fourth season, I believe that it's time for us to be critical of the premise of the show. Similar to The Bachelor, um, I remember long ago, shout out to the legend, to the queen, Barbara Walters said, The Bachelor is a sexist, misogynist franchise. And she was like, I'm disgusted. It's all these women who are supposed to be competing for one man. And at the time, The Bachelor was ugly. It was this, um, he was super ugly. This guy, I I think his name was like Ben. And he was, there was some girl named Courtney. And anyways, and and Barbara was like, and The Bachelor isn't even attractive. (laughs) Like, I saw her say all this on The View. She was like turned up about it. And it's true, right? The premise of 20, 25 women having to like hope that some guy will pick them is absurd. And the the Bachelor and the Bachelorette, they no longer care about if anybody lasts on the show. That's why they keep just plucking a contestant from one season and making them the lead the next season. So therefore, every single person who's on the show is only there hoping to be the lead the next season. It's so disingenuous. And I think, so a lot of people are turned off by The Bachelor and The Bachelorette. Like, a lot of people don't watch it anymore. And then when I hear the podcasters who do cover it, talk about it, they sound completely disgusted. Like, beyond disgusted that they have to do it. Um, They, like, we're over it. Because these couples don't even work. And so then in comes Love is Blind, where, you know, we feel like this is a, it's just an original, um, very unique take on dating. And it just has, um, there's a lot of commonalities between the show and online dating, which is what, you know, most people do. So, um, but I think it's time for us to speak up. At least that's what I'm going to do, you know, on this Joe Rogan sized platform and talk about what is wrong with this series. So number one, why is it that the people behind Love is Blind do not ask the cast what physical features that they find attractive in a partner? We need to find out the produce the the casting department should be doing just a little bit of MFing research to find out. Look at me using letters instead of words. By the way, I realized that um I was cursing a lot. I was cursing a lot in my Vanderpump Rules episode. <laughs> and maybe I'm trying to clean it up. I don't know. But why can't and I just want to say the F word. But um, why is no one doing any research to find out what the cast likes? It is wrong. Because let's say hypothetically you cast 14. I'll say 10. Hypothetically, let's say you cast 10 women and every single one of those 10 women only want to be with a man who is six feet tall, who has muscles, who has a good job, um, who has siblings. I'm just throwing that out there. And let's say that, you know, they get 10 women, those 10 women, and they cast men who are all five, eight or shorter, um, overweight, scrawny um work at McDonald's like it's easy for the for the people who cast the series to find out what you know their contestants are into and try to match that it's not the hardest thing in the world and they should be doing that because the way that the show is set up it is an m it is rigged it's an mfing setup and it's it's done this way So that we as viewers are entertained, but I don't need to be entertained. I don't need to see people squirming 
with their fiancés. I'd rather see Lauren and Cameron's and Tiffany and Brett's. Because honestly, when you see like that palpable love and chemistry that two people have, that's enjoyable to watch. That makes us excited. We're rooting for these people. We want them to win. It's like people are obsessed with Lauren and Cameron. Their social media blew up. They are permanently wealthy because of this goddamn show. And so we don't need to see what we've been seeing on this show. And so Love is Blind is a quote unquote social experiment, but this experiment has lasted for years now. It ain't an experiment no more, okay? We are approaching almost half a decade of this series. When you think about this stuff was filmed years prior to it, to season one debuting. It's not an experiment anymore, y'all. Stop lying. You know, Vanessa and Nick still ask, is love blind on the show? And I'm going to answer that question. Love will never be blind. Infatuation is blind. But love involves lust, which stems from physical attraction. You can't just love someone's personality or mind and not want to fuck them. We saw that with Mark and Jessica in season one. We saw that with Shayna and Kyle and Deep D and Shake in season two. We saw that with Nancy and Bartiz in season three. And we see that with Zach and Irina in season four and Kwame and Chelsea in season four and Jackie and Marshall in season four. Micah may also not be attracted to Paul either, but it's too early in the series or in the season for me to know that. And I think part of, now everybody that I just listed, they're attractive people. There are a few people that I listed that aren't so attractive, but they aren't a two, right? Some of them weren't a 10, but they're not exactly a two. And Love is Blind used to cast hot people, generally speaking. Um, Season one, I think Mark was not attractive, but that was one person. Um, Season two, to my recollection, everyone was was attractive. Deep Tea is attractive. It's just that Shake didn't like her. Nancy in season three, also beautiful girl. She just didn't do it for parties, right? And so, but I I still think that Love is Blind used to cast hot people and they seem to be moving away from that formula as the seasons continue. And I think that's a bad idea because again, love involves lust and especially when it comes to men. Men are so extremely visual. And I mean, it's not going to work and it's not going to last for either gender if they aren't attracted to the person that they're engaged to. (laughs) Which is when I think about it, I really, really do enjoy that people have to get engaged before they see each other. That is the... um, best element of the show when you think about it because look at how many couples would back away if they knew what somebody looked like first so I I love I love the setup however there's a lot of room for improvement on the structure of just throwing a bunch of random people together when you could easily find out what people's preferences are so reality tv is here to entertain and yes I am doing some reading And I've been congested, so I apologize. I've been a little congested, so very, very sorry um, if that's coming through in the audio. But reality TV is here to entertain. It's not here to create successful couples. Kind of like it's not here to nurture healthy friendships, right? If you, you could look at the Real Housewives series for that example and 
pretty much all these shows like it, the drama and the tension um it's either humor or drama and tension and these producers tend to like a lot of friction um but the solution for giving a better people on love is blind a better chance of meeting their match is to make sure that people that they would find attractive and that they have found attractive before the series cast those mfers sorry i'm reading i just repeated myself i'm sorry so um attraction is obviously subjective and but the the casting department doesn't seem to care about what they already know is going to be a disaster when people are together and I have never cringed so often at so many couples as I have in season four. And I'm only five episodes in. And I think it's a real shame that Brett and Tiffany are supposed to carry this entire season and be the new Lauren and Cameron. That's a lot of pressure. It's unfortunate that they're, they seem to be the only good match out of five couples got engaged, they seem to be the only two people. Um, and so that seemed good together. So next, let's see here. Um, I also think that it's something I don't enjoy about Love is Blind is that they cast a lot of people who only have cameos in the damn kitchen. And we don't ever see them on a single date in the pods they don't get to fly to mexico to have sex i remember i read an article about some of the behind the scenes stuff from season one and i for, forgive me if i said this when i discussed season one um if i did but anyways there was a couple that got engaged and they never showed them on season one of love is blind and that couple broke up and i think that's why they didn't show them but don't edit that shit out you know, so it kind of makes me wonder. It's like, have people been getting engaged season two, three, and four, and we don't get to see it? What I think, what I think would be great for um, Love is Blind producers and or editors to do is to show us some of the couples that have failed and some of their dates. They deserve their shine because when you think about it, just do like one episode of like five minutes each of some pairings. Because when you think about it, this show has an enormous, enormous audience and, you know, there's people watching the show and they could find a partner, um, someone who sees them on the show and they didn't get engaged and be like, hmm, let me slide into those DMs. And in case you didn't know, Jessica from season one, who could not get over Barnett, she is engaged, sorry, she is married and pregnant she's married to a hot ass doctor and she is pregnant with their first child and she got she met him dated him got engaged to him and married him why he saw jessica on the show and although she looked like a train wreck he thought she was beautiful he thought she was great and he reached out to her so even though jessica presented herself in a horrific light she still got married off of the show from someone who watched it. And so if, you know, someone, if Jessica's proof that people could see somebody on this series and pursue them. So I just think it's kind of unfair that we don't get to see any of the other people who don't get engaged. Um, and I just think it's like very embarrassing because you probably are going to tell all your friends and family that you were cast on the show and then they're never going to see your face on the show. Um, and one of the good things I will say about Love is Blind is that all the contestants live in the same city, which I've said before, you know, it makes it more realistic for these couples to actually have a chance to continue their relationships off camera. And I also like that this season, especially there are, the cast seems to be like older people, people in their thirties. Love is Blind doesn't seem to like rely upon people in their you know, early 20s or, or teens sometimes. And, um, but as much as The Bachelor and Bachelorette are garbage, the proposals on The Bachelor and The Bachelorette are second to none. 
They are extremely romantic. And this season, I swear every single person, every single man on this show who proposed got down on one knee and said, will you marry me? And I was like, what is happening? (laughs) Where are the speeches? Like, I know that they don't know these people well, but I did not like any of these proposals because it's just no, no. It's a hard no for me. I need more, um, a little more thought, a little more thought and um, put placed into these proposals i need them to be eloquent i need them to be romantic emotional moving don't just say my name and will you marry me and something i hate i always hate how excited women get when they have a beautiful ring like as a female it just bothers me because i just feel like it makes us look like all we care about is how big the diamond is or how beautiful the ring is and it's just it's very ghetto to me i'm not into it (laughs) It's like they're proposed to and they never care. It's just the ring that they start screaming about. And I'm like, this, I don't, it it rubs me. It rubs me the wrong way. Like one of the people I know did that for sure was Jackie. And um, I feel like Irina did that a bit too. And it's just, I don't know. But like you need to be excited about getting engaged more than you need to be excited about how shiny your ring is. All right, y'all, those are my thoughts on Love is Blind, Um, the premise of it, and the series itself. Now I'm going to record my episode about the recap and the review of episodes one through five, and this has taken a long ass time. So I listened to one podcast that reviewed the show. And then I, you know, rewatched the way that I always rewatch by just fast forwarding to death. Um, And then I took a lot of notes. So I'm kind of, I'm interested to see how long this next episode will be because a bitch has some thoughts. You know what I'm saying? Like, why wouldn't I have thoughts on this effing show? Like, okay, let me shut the fuck up. Okay, y'all. Thanks for listening. I'm dropping both of these episodes tomorrow. And as far as I know, these next two episodes will be the only episodes that I release this week. Next week, I will come at y'all with more episodes. You're subscribed. You already know what's up. So if I do come out with more like Vanderpump this week instead of next week, and or Queen's Court this week and send the next week, you will know because you are already subscribed. Thank you. I love you. Let's do this. And don't ever be afraid to slide in my DMs um, like sometimes people do or tweet at me and let me know if you want to be on the podcast or if you want to discuss this series. I do this solo, this podcast solo, because it's the most, um, saves me the most amount of time. But if you are a super fan of the series, you know, don't be afraid to um, slide in my DMs, um, especially so we could talk about the finale. Anyways, but I have a few people in mind that I might hit up because so many people were like really, really tweeting at my ass um, about this show. I'm, I love, I just, I love how much people like to like have so much to say about this goddamn show. So if you're one of those people, do not hesitate to slide in my DMs. All right, let me get to my recap. 